All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Boris Logvinsky, and I look after publisher-facing products at MoPub. So um, as was just announced, we're going to spend some time talking about rewarded video today. Uh, but before we jump into that, I want to share some stats with you that I think are pretty interesting. 30 minutes is the amount of time that's spent uh, looking at videos today by the average user. And that makes up, I think, a little over 10% of total time spent on mobile devices, and that is quickly, quickly growing. This year, it's expected that $4.24 billion will be spent on mobile video advertising, and that's expected to grow to $6 billion in 2018. And so the question becomes, as an app developer, um, how can you take advantage of this revenue and get a piece of that pie? Because an even very small piece of the $6 billion pie is still pretty large. And so at Mopub, we've been thinking about that, and we've sort of looked at the industry, and, and I think one of the really great solutions to that um, is rewarded video. And the reason for that is that when you think about advertisers and what their goals are with video, it really comes down to two things they're trying to get after. They're trying to get conversions, and they're trying to get completions. And rewarded video solves both of those problems, um, but with the benefits, um, or strong benefits for users. So before we talk about that specifically, let's take a look at what a rewarded video experience looks like. So here we are. Uh, we are inside of Ubisoft's Rayman, and we're going to click into their uh, little app store, and you'll see that there are a couple of options here. Uh, you can purchase some gems, or you can uh, you know, buy, buy that starter pack, um, and then there's this option to watch a video. And when you do that, a non-skippable video starts, driving that behavior that the advertiser wants, which is a completion, and it keeps going until it ends. And as it wraps up, it gives the user the opportunity to convert, if that's what they want to do, and if not, in this particular case, we're going to close out. And there you go. The user is right away rewarded with five gems. Um, and that's great. That is a really powerful user experience um, because it's a win-win. It's a win-win because the user is getting something that they want out of the game. right? They're getting um, a benefit. They're getting a life. They're getting something that they need in order to continue progressing inside of the application. The advertiser is really excited because they just got a completion. They got you to watch a really engaging experience, which is the video, in this case, the Teenage, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, trailer, and they got you to watch it all the way to the end. You're much more likely to convert now that you've spent 30 seconds watching this, right? It's the same is true for app install ads, for example. And that means that you get really competitive CPMs. So what we've seen across the industry and we've seen consistently over the past couple of years is that rewarded video consistently drive some of the highest CPMs for uh, mobile app developers. And the best part is you get happy users. And there's the last strong benefit here, which is a bonus, that you get to introduce your users um, to your in-app economy. So if you have something uh, where you're selling lots of resources, where you're giving the users the opportunity to buy, this is a great way uh, to introduce your users to it. We've heard a number of our app developers say that on a consistent basis, the users who watch a rewarded video or putting rewarded video into their application actually increases the LTV um, of the users. So it's really great. But rather than me continue to talk about and singing the praises of rewarded video, I thought we'd turn it over to our customers and see what they have to say. When thinking about how to monetize our applications, we try to find placements that are meaningful for the users. So rewarded video is really an interesting format because what happens is that users get something for free, obviously, and it makes them engage with the application even more. Developers think much, much more from the very beginning about how to integrate rewarded video. Tumogul is a demand-side platform. Historically, we've been very focused on brand advertising, brand impacts especially on mobile devices, are usually driven by full screen types of experience. Rewarded video has been just a phenomenal channel for us in terms of ad revenue. We found how to integrate rewarded video into our titles in a very thoughtful manner. If they want to go after millennials, for instance, uh, they are going to engage with games. Rewarded video in particular is pretty game-changing. It's a pretty unique value exchange between a consumer and an advertiser. It's not just a game that you've finished a level and then there's an ad in front of you. You're sort of requesting that ad in exchange for something, so that's, I think, really, really cool. The advertiser wins because they're getting a fully immersed user watching a video. It performs very well. The user is enjoying it because they're getting free virtual currency out of it. The publisher loves it because it's a great retention tool while earning and maximizing revenue. 
OK. Hopefully you heard some of that. If not, we'll post the video after you can take a look. Um, but the goal was to sort of sell you on this idea that rewarded video is a, is a powerful format and something that both advertisers and app developers can make great use of. And so what I want to spend uh, the last couple of minutes talking about is what are some implementation best practices for getting started with rewarded video? So the first thing is that you want to do is you want to find the right time. So at Mopub, we have this thing that we talk about, which is called the intention trough. And it's a pretty basic idea, which is that as a user is going through the game, they have um, sort of greater amounts of intention, right? When they download your app and then they get started, they go through um, a tutorial, they start playing their game, they're like super excited, and you really want to keep them going through that. But then when the game is over, it creates a natural, natural pause. And so that's a really great place uh, to introduce something like a rewarded format. The other thing about finding the right time is you want to pay attention to when a user might be low on resources. Uh, so for example, if they're running out of gems or they're running out of something and they need to move forward, um, that is also a great um, opportunity to do that. Additionally, you really want to think about this um, in terms of two economics principles. The first one is scarcity. And the basic idea is that you don't want to give too much away. If you're giving away a ton of uh, value per rewarded video, uh, then you're sort of devaluing everything else that's happening in the game. On the other hand, you don't want to give so little that the user's like, oh, I got you know, these three gems, but it's not going to get me anywhere inside of the game. So you really have to find the right balance, and we encourage you to sort of play around with that. The other thing you think about is rarity. And the basic idea here is you don't want to have something that's overly persistent. You want to make it unique, and you want to make it intrinsically surprising. What we've seen is when an app developer uh, sort of shows this uh, format or shows the opportunity to watch a video in an infrequent basis, the user is very likely to convert on that action and on that call to action, much more so than if it's something that's ever present. And so that's another thing that you want to play around with and something you want to continue to iterate on, which is how frequently you're showing this opportunity. The next thing I want to talk about is security. So security actually becomes really important um, with rewarded video because you're actually sometimes giving away hard currency. That is something that you can purchase uh, with real money. And so when you're thinking about security, you have two options for the reward rewarded video. You have client-side rewarding, which is rewarding that happens on the device itself. Um, and then you have server-side rewarding, which is something that uh, happens sort of in the cloud between two servers. And there are great reasons to use both of them. I quickly want to cover those. So client-side rewarding is really simple to set up. It doesn't require any infrastructure. You just set it up inside of your game, and you give the user the reward right there. It's perfect if you don't have a complex app economy. And it's also great when you're giving away soft currency. So if you're giving away a life, or you're giving away something that you don't particularly have an affinity for, it's totally fine. Uh, you can think about it as if uh, someone was go out there, you know, download your app, and find some way to hack it and give, them, give themselves a million of these, would you really care? So if you're giving away like a million lives in a game that just sort of keeps going, it's not that big a deal. On the other hand, server-side rewarding is more complicated to set up and requires for you to have a currency server, requires for you to be able to accept postbacks from um, you know, your network partners or your ad, uh, ad monetization partners. But it comes with a great benefit um, of stronger security. And so when you have complex app economies, when you have something where you are selling a lot of in-app purchases, where you're giving away resources that could be purchased, uh, you want to be very careful with that and implement server-side rewarding. Again, it requires a more complicated um, implementation, but it is definitely worth it. And because it's more complex, I want to cover a little bit about how that process works and what's different about it. So instead of having the rewarding happen directly in the app, um, you have communication happening between a couple of servers. So in this example, uh, we're going to walk through a typical flow. You're going to pre-cache the video. You're going to ask your user whether or not they want to watch the ad. If they say yes, they're going to watch the video. It's going to finish playing, just like we saw in the example. And then there's going to be a notification to a server, in this case, the Mopub server. Um, and then the Mopub server is actually going to do something, and it's going to validate and verify that this is a valid request. It's going to do a bunch of checks to make sure that it's true and it's real. And then, and only then, it's going to send it over to your server, where you get to get the call with a secret key in a secure environment to make sure that it's a real call, that it's coming from a verified source, and that you're allowed to give that user the currency that's being passed over. And so when you do that, you end up pushing the currency down into the client, and your user gets the reward. And the benefit here is that there's no way for them to hack through the client to get back up into your own server or your own stack, because a secret key is needed, an API is needed. You need to know a bunch of different things in order to make that work. And that creates a really, really secure environment. So 
both are options, and definitely consider, if you're considering a rewarder video, think through of which one you really need. You don't necessarily need to implement this if you have a, a simpler application. The last piece of advice that we have is working with multiple partners. And really what this comes down to is that no matter what anybody tells you out there, no one ad partner is going to be able to have all of the ads that you need for your app. Which basically means that if you have users going through over and over again, they're not going to have an advertisement for you ready to go always. Right? And that depends because maybe they have frequency caps, they have a bunch of different logic that says don't show a user an ad more than you know, some amount of time. And so because of that, you want to work with a bunch of different partners. You do that to increase your fill rate, and by increasing your fill rate, which is the number of ads you can get back, you are able to increase your revenue. You also get greater ad diversity, which is to say that all kinds of advertising partners work with, all kinds of advertising partners work with a lot of different folks, um, and you want to get as many, ad, as many advertisers uh, running ads inside of your application, uh, simply because you don't want to be showing the same ad over and over to your users. And lastly, more competition simply means more revenue for you, right? More competition drives up prices and it makes it work. So here are some folks and some partners that we work with in the ecosystem. Um, these are uh, folks who do really well in rewarded video. Uh, we've put Mopub up there because a lot of them actually use us to, uh, a lot of publishers use us to manage all of these ecosystem partners and they also use us uh, to get direct uh, demand uh, on the Mopub side. So that's it. That actually wraps up the tips that I have. What I want to do now is I want to introduce Elaine Zhu, uh, who heads up product marketing on the publisher side for Mopub, and Jonathan Simon, uh, who heads up uh, marketing at Magmic, uh, to talk a little bit more in depth from our customer experience about rewarded video. Thanks. All right. Hi, everyone. My name's Elaine Zhu. Uh, and as Boris mentioned, I look after uh, publisher product marketing at Mopub. I'm here with one of our highly valued partners, Jonathan Simon from Magmic. Um, we've been working with Magmic for uh, almost three years now, I think. Yes. Um, and so Magmic's developed a number of really top titles um, since 2002 when they launched uh, as a company. And they also work with a number of really big name licensors you may have heard of. And that includes Hasbro, Mattel, uh, Rubik's Cube, and a number of others. So uh, Jonathan, maybe you can introduce Magmic a bit more and talk a little about yourself and your sure, role. Sure, no problem. I um, run the uh, head, head of marketing at uh, Magmic, but I also handle the UA side and the ad monetization side, which gives me kind of a unique look at both sides of the coin there. Um, Magmic's been around since 2002, founded by John Criswick and Joshua Osterocker in Ottawa, Canada, um, one of the largest uh, independent uh, publishers still in Canada today. We started off uh, on BlackBerry, very ingrained with them. If anybody had a BlackBerry from back in the day, you probably played our Texas Hold'em poker game. Um, and as BlackBerry went down and iPhone and Android started to come up, we shifted. And those licensors that we worked with back in the day um, worked together to um, uh, get the licenses that we have um, going forward. Perfect. Um, so you've been working with Mopub for about three years now, and um, I think we actually worked together on a few initiatives, including when we launched Rewarded Video Mediation of Ad Networks uh, last year. Um, can you give the audience some insight uh, about how you think about monetization of your apps in general? Yeah, I think um, like a lot of developers that are probably in the room, um, we, we want to make sure that uh, the user comes first. Um, so as we roll things out, and yes, we've had a lot of apps in market, and we, we want to slowly introduce things like ad monetization to our users to make sure that um, everything is working correctly and um, they're, they're happy. Um, at the end of the day, they want, we want strong reviews and, and moving forward. So rewarded video is just another tool that the users um, definitely love. We see it in our reviews. Um, we see it um, with our customer feedback um, moving forward. Um, they want to watch rewarded videos. They want to earn the currency in the game. And um, we're definitely pushing that forward with all our new titles, so much so that um, some of our older games, like Skip Bone Phase 10, we are putting IAPs into the game just so we could show rewarded video and give that experience to the user. 
So um, can you talk a little bit about how you guys think through integrating those rewarded video ad units into an app? We heard a little bit about the intention trough that Mopub talks about. I'm just wondering if, if there are other strategies you find that worked across the different clients. Yeah, I'll take categories for example. We rolled that out with Hasbro um, right before Christmas time and put rewarded video into the game on, on day one. I, I worked with the product team to get them to understand the, the benefits of adding rewarded video and we have a number of triggers in the game where the user can click to watch a rewarded video. They can play a, uh, a category and switch the categories. They can go directly to the store and they, they'll see that they can just um, watch a video for free. Um, and there's also a banner at the top. You, you talk about rarity and scarcity. We sometimes turn that on, turn that off. And we have a lot of triggers on the back end. We're constantly experimenting to find the right mix. And we've We've honestly found no drop in IPs um, from that. And in some cases, we've, like Boris had said, have introduced the user base to IPs and even increased revenue. So definitely um, revenue's gone and, and also retention has um, you know, gone up with rewarded video for sure. Great, so definitely a big question a lot of developers ask us is about the overall impact of ads on the user experience. And one of the things that um, you'd mentioned earlier when we were chatting is about how rewarded video has affected the retention that you guys have seen. Um, conveniently, I have a slide <laughs> on this. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll just speak to the slide. This is um, categories. Um, just uh, talking to uh, our, our product management team and asking them, this is really cool stat for us, is that on day one in a cohort, um, we've seen dramatic increase at 29% day one retention for users that have been introduced to watch a video and then have watched that video. Um, and uh, as opposed to those that weren't watching videos, um, you see a much lower retention rate. So for me, it's a constant balance between trying to get as much eCPM and, and show as many impressions as possible, but also appeasing the uh, product management team and making sure our retention does not drop by showing either interstitial videos or, or getting the user to watch rewarded videos. Have you guys got any anecdotal user feedback on rewarded videos since you've introduced them? Yeah, I mean, uh, our user base has uh, told us through customer support and through uh, reviews and um, talk to us about the rewarded video. They want more impressions. They want more fill. We're in the process of trying to, you know, work with more partners to increase our fill and get get more re video, rewarded videos out there. Great. And in that purchase is obviously um, an important part of your monetization as well. Uh, do you see any effect on the in-app economy from this? And you touched on it a little earlier, but I think yeah. specifically on, um, you know, introducing users to new currencies? Yeah, um, you know, we, we've just seen that it's, it's, it's increased. And by having, um, having banners and things on the main menu that introduce users to what a rewarded video is, they can click on that, they go to the store, they can see not only, well, I can watch a video for free, but now I can get 100 coins for 99 cents, 200 coins for 199, that, so forth and so on. And they may have never clicked on that button in the top corner to see, see the store in the first place. So maybe they're gonna watch a few videos, but then they're gonna say, hey, what's two bucks, what's three bucks? I'm gonna load up on coins. And we've definitely seen an increase in our IEPs from in introducing rewarded video, not only in categories, because it was in there on day one, but as we rolled it into Skippo, and now phase 10 in the next uh, weeks, we are going to see uh, IP purchases go up as well as the revenue from rewarded ads. Great. So um, as you mentioned earlier, you're increase, increasing fill rates by working with a number of partners. Um, one question we also hear a lot is, you know, I'm getting, um, you know, inbounds from a lot of different partners in this particular ad networks uh, that are offering me really, really high ECPMs. How do you choose which of these partners that you want to work with? It's, uh, it's not always easy to figure out who, who the best people are. I would say if, if you're in this room right now listening to this talk, the, the best guys are over there. Um, they, they're at this conference. Um, we spent a lot of time um, checking out other people, um, trying to figure out if they were lying or not. It also depends on if you're working on iOS or Android. It depends on your type of game, the type of ads that your users respond to, branded content versus UA content. You really need to know your user. 
Um, but a good place to start is with all these ad networks that are here at Casual Connect. And it's also about building the relationship because they don't know how much traffic you have until you tell them. And they might be, um, you might have them lower in the waterfall. And if you don't communicate to them, you know, what kind of traffic you have, uh, what kind of users you have, they won't be able to adapt their ads to your users and give you the highest eCPM possible. Um, building those relationships, not only with a mediation partner like Mopub, but with the other ad networks is crucial to driving up rewarded video um, moving forward. Great, any last advice for developers starting out with rewarded? Um, I, think, I think everybody should try it. <laughs> Um, it's worked for us. Um, a lot of people are doing it. Um, m a lot of developers, especially with Magmic, we're very skittish on the uh, display side. But rewarded video, it's, it's really a win-win situation for both you and the user. And I, I just don't see a reason why you shouldn't at least try it. Great. Thank you.